Preventing pressure ulcers in the community is a multidisciplinary team issue. This isn't something that just community nurses can work towards to prevent. We could have a patient which each one of us as a discipline could be going in and visiting and absolutely any of us can give preventative advice. So once a health professional has risk assessed, such as the water lower must, we would then start something called the S-Skin Bundle. This is a national generic prevention care plan which we've adapted to use for the community. So what it stands for is S, stands for surface. This could be making sure that they're on a pressure relieving cushion. It could mean that if they're in a wheelchair, they need a referral to wheelchair services to assess for a specialist wheelchair cushion. The other S stands for skin inspection. This is absolutely key. A pressure ulcer, otherwise known as a bed sore, can start within 20 minutes and could deteriorate down to a grade 4, which is an open wound down to the bone, sometimes within 24 hours if the pressure isn't relieved. It is absolutely key that where we as a service are going in, if it's not daily and there is a carer there every day, that we incorporate the carer to train them how to look out for early signs of pressure ulcers. So what does that look like? It could be a red area over a bony prominence. They could complain of pain, pins and needles, or an uncomfortable sensation. The darker the skin, the harder it is to pick up. So it's important that we let the carers and the patient know that. K stands for keep moving. This means that because of that 20 minutes window that we've got to make sure that somebody is off that affected area, it could be as simple as giving instructions for them to rock, from side to side to reduce that pressure or if they can are able to wait bare to stand up to relieve that pressure and allow the blood circulation. I stands for incontinence. If the person has got incontinence, if they have pads, if they have excess sweating due to fever, pyrexia, it's important that we ask the GP or the district nurse to prescribe a barrier cream or spray for, to protect the skin from that moisture. N stands for nutrition and hydration. This is absolutely key. For the skin to function, it needs adequate nutrition and hydration. The skin is the largest organ and the most outwardly of the body, and it needs this to be able to properly function. There's increased risks if you're diabetic, if you've got vascular issues affecting circulation to your lower limbs. A particular look could be there for looking for early stage pressure damage. These are the five key components of preventing pressure ulcers. Together, it is a multidisciplinary approach, and what this film is hoping to put out there for all of us is to remind carers and the patient to be able to understand why this is important in preventing pressure ulcers and looking after their own skin. Please include the relatives in this as well. I'm a TVN. We are committed to preventing pressure ulcers. We ensure that the skin bundle is in place and we work with friends and carers to try and detect the early signs of pressure damage. As a district nurse, we risk assess our patients, we ensure the skin bundle is put in place and we try and do this in conjunction with the patient themselves, the relatives and the carers. As a community matron, my main focus is looking after people who have chronic long-term conditions with several comorbidities and an important part of my role is to ensure that patients and their carers are aware of the risks and what they need to do to try and help prevent um, pressure problems from developing. It's really all about prevention. In Bluebird Care, we make sure that all the carers have training on how to prevent the pressure ulcer. We work with the district nurse and who advise us on how to prevent uh, the ulcer by keeping the customer moving, by checking daily the, 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 the skin, by reporting any concern to the district nurse or to the doctors, and by checking all nutrition and hydration. As an occupational therapist, one of our roles is to reduce the risk of skin breakdown. One of our key areas is seating and manual handling. We provide pressure cushions or special chairs, depending on your level of function. We also provide specialist equipment to support with manual handling, including slide sheets. These are all to support with reducing the risk of skin breakdown. If a client has a pressure sore and develops one, then we would involve the district nurses along with the carers and the patient. Part of my role as a student nurse is to learn how to risk assess. To prevent pressure ulcers. 
So if I assess a patient that's unwell um, and is likely to be bed bound for an extended period of time, uh, I do remind the patient uh, and the relatives and any carers um, that they should try and avoid prolonged pressure uh, over bony areas. Um, and this is obviously to prevent damage to the skin. If they do notice any inflamed areas, particularly over bony areas, uh, I do encourage them to report it as soon as possible. It is particularly important for those patients with neurological disorders, particularly those who have muscle wastage, weakness and also reduced sensation that they check their pressure areas on a daily basis. Working as a healthcare assistant in the district nursing team, we work very closely with patients, carers and relatives. We ensure that the skin bundle is in place. As a physiotherapist, when prescribing exercise programmes, we would ensure that we're limiting any friction between the skin and bed surface, as this can cause superficial abrasions. We, our role is also to teach carers and family ways in which they can limit any pressure areas um, or skin breakdown by teaching correct ways of manual handling. It's also important to turn patients every two hours, those patients that may be bed bound, um, and four hours at night, um, and those patients that are maybe chair bound, um, it's important that they do push up through the upper limbs to relieve any pressure. Um, uh, it's a good way to prevent any skin breakdown. Okay, my role at the wheelchair service is to assess people's pressure care needs as part of the wheelchair provision. We offer a range of pressure solutions to service users from seating cushions and, and even up to sort of bespoke um, custom moulded seating. We also use a pressure map system which allows us to provide a picture of the person's pressure and it helps with service users and carers understanding where the loading is and enables us to identify appropriate equipment for the service user. As a social worker, I work with individuals in the hospital and in the community as part of the assessment and care and support planning process, um, ensuring that a person's skin integrity is maintained um, is, is a key objective of my role. Um, this involves working alongside um, other healthcare and social care professionals, both within the hospital and, the com and in the community, ensuring that um, the appropriate interventions, um, equipment um, and measures are implemented to um, ensure that that person's skin um, integrity is maintained. I also work with the carers, family members and care providers uh, whether that be in a nursing home, residential home, or um, in the um, person's own home, um, who all play a major part in working to mitigate and prevent the risk of skin breakdown. When I recommend continent products to patients, I always remind the patient that the importance of wearing a skin cream or a barrier cream, which can be obtained from the GP, um, and I also will recommend this to the GP in my report. As a podiatrist, one of our key roles is to prevent ulcerations on the feet, particularly on the heels. And we deliver this through education programs, working with monthly disciplinary teams such as our district nurses, physiotherapists, our specialist tissue viability nurses, so that we can absolutely maximise and optimise the prevention of ulcers and manage them as well as we can. We also try and aim to educate their families and all the carers that we get involved with and we also carry out some uh, health promotion programs where we actually encourage them to go online and actually access our pressure ulcer training program. For therefore we try to be as involved as possible. The key thing is prevention and we can never say this enough. One of the key components of preventing pressure ulcer is to maintain good nutrition and hydration. If you're underweight or have low body fat stores, you are at higher risk of developing pressure ulcers, especially if you're less mobile. My role as a dietitian is to ensure that you have a balanced diet, but also give you advice on foods that reduce your risk of infection. So when I see patients and their carers, I try to impart all the information with regards to helping with their nutrition and hydration. They need to be well hydrated, to ensure that the, they don't get dehydrated or constipated as a result of their pain medication or increasing their protein intake. Safeguarding is about enabling adults at risk of abuse or neglect to stay safe, balancing their risks with their rights and keeping them at the centre. Pressure ulcers are occasionally 
representative of poor care. So that's why we need to know how they develop and to share our learning. The S-Skin bundle is really helpful. Some of the things we've identified from the past are where we've given great care, but we perhaps haven't communicated as well as we could have with the carers. Or perhaps the patient didn't fully understand the risks. Something that's really important is good recording and also for people when they're recording to also ask, so what? What could we do? How could we give this person support? Why is the care plan not working? So that's why the S-Skin Bundle is really, really helpful to protect adults and to help us all to make pressure ulcers our business. In HRCH we absolutely recognise the impact of pressure ulcers on the quality of life for our patients. We also know that the nursing strategy leading change adding value talks about improving patient outcomes and improving patient experience. In this trust therefore we've adopted a zero tolerance to pressure ulcers. We know that to achieve a, to achieve a zero tolerance we need to work in a multidisciplinary way and so we are looking to work with all of our partners to achieve this.